This is Reporter Room with Jessica Della Davies. Welcome to Reporter Room, where we seek truth and justice. My name is Jessica Della Davies. I'm an investigative journalist, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to present you guys with the evidence and theories in the Staircase murder case. And you guys are going to be the jury and render your verdict at the end of the video. The Staircase murders... It's an absolutely crazy story, so please stay with me until the end. And before we start, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up and help Reporter Room grow. So Michael Peterson's an American novelist, and he was born in October of 1943. He was convicted by a jury in 2003 of murdering his second wife, Kathleen Peterson. She died on the staircase of their beautiful home. Everything I'm sharing with you today is my opinion, and opinions are not facts, so please don't send any negativity to anyone, anytime, anywhere. Thank you to our channel members, and also to our subscribers, and a big shout out to our producers, Energy Shots, and Sasha Angel. So what happened? In December 2001, Michael called 911 to report that his wife Kathleen had fallen down a set of stairs in their Forest Hills mansion in Durham North Carolina and that she had died however the police who arrived on the scene they did not believe Michael's version of events Michael said that Kathleen fell while intoxicated on the stairs however there was a lot of blood and I'm going to give you guys a trigger warning on this video there was a lot of blood all over that staircase the most blood i've ever seen in any crime scene and it was all dry so that means kathleen had to be lying at the bottom of that staircase for a good long while the police were very suspicious and they believed that michael had bludgeoned kathleen to death the prosecutors thought michael used a gift from kathleen's sister which was a blow poke and put a pin in blow poke because this one comes up later again. So please stay with me. So they thought the blow poke was the murder weapon and Michael was charged with Kathleen's murder. Okay. So Michael hired a crack defense team and he hired David Rudolph to lead the team. So let's go back a little bit because before Michael married Kathleen, in Durham, North Carolina, he was married to a woman named Patricia Sue Peterson in Germany from 1965 to 1987. He was in the military, so they were living in Germany. And she is the mother of his two sons. And while Michael was on trial for what happened to his second wife, Kathleen, we find out that there was another death in Michael's life another death that ended at the bottom of a staircase what are the odds so while michael was living in germany with his first wife patricia his best friend's widow who happened to live next door fell on a staircase and who was the last person to see her michael was so now let's look at what the coroner in the first case stated. He thought that she died from an intracerebral hemorrhage after falling downstairs, which resulted in similar head injuries to those sustained by Kathleen, and her death was ruled an accident. After this, Michael and his first wife adopted her two daughters, and is her death suspicious? 
probably. Is it conclusive evidence of Michael's involvement with either death? I will leave it to you, the jury, to decide the case. However, the prosecution introduces the very first staircase death into Michael's trial for the second staircase death, the death of Kathleen. And it's introduced as an incident because they couldn't charge Michael with the first death because that was ruled an accident. So they got it into evidence in the current case stating that this is what gave Michael the idea of how to quote fake Kathleen's accident. And it's worth noting that during the trial, Michael's adopted daughters did stand loyally behind Michael. So should the judge have allowed the death of the first woman, their next door neighbor and widow of his best friend, should this have been allowed into evidence? What do you guys think as a jury? The Durham County DA at the time of Kathleen Peterson's death in 2001 was a guy named James Harden. And DA Harden claimed that Michael used the blow poke while the defense experts claimed the blood spatters pattern did not match the blow poke scenario. Instead, the defense claimed that Kathleen simply had fallen down the stairs, but that didn't sound right either because the lacerations on her head seemed too severe and the amount of blood was just, there was just so much blood. So after the trial was over, many people moved on to the owl theory. And I'm going to tell you more about the owl theory in just a moment because it's wackadoodle do. So please stay with me. By the way, if you love true crime and haven't seen my video series on Chris Watts's mistress, Nicole Kessinger, you'll want to see that next and I will link it for you in the description below. So it's also brought out during the trial that Michael is bisexual. Is this relevant? I'll leave it to you, the jury, to decide. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't because Michael was having affairs with men during his marriage to Kathleen. Now, Michael claims that Kathleen knew all about his orientation and the prosecutors claimed that Kathleen did not. So did Michael have a motive to hurt Kathleen? Well, the couple was in $143,000 of credit card debt at the time of Kathleen's death and Kathleen was expected that she might be laid off by the end of that year. And Michael was a writer, so he did not bring in a real income to the family through his writing. And anyone who watches any kind of CSI can say that money is a motive, and Kathleen had a $1.4 million life insurance policy. Is that a common motivation for murder? I will leave it to you, the jury, to decide. The prosecution stated that Kathleen had discovered Michael's affairs with men leading to a heated argument and that this is what led to her ending up at the bottom of the stairs. Michael insisted that Kathleen already knew all about him and would have been just fine with it. So where does Michael say he was when Kathleen ended up at the bottom of the stairs. Michael claims he was outside by their swimming pool smoking his pipe when Kathleen fell and lay there. And remember, the blood was dry, so she lay there for a long time. And he says he couldn't hear her cries for help because she lived for around an hour and a half after she fell. And the defense showed a dramatization or recreation of how Michael could not have heard Kathleen outside by the pool and I agree if he was outside by the pool the whole time he wouldn't have heard her because the house was so big and the pool had a fountain. So was Kathleen intoxicated? Well the toxicology reports did find traces of prescription medication for anxiety and muscle relaxers along with a low level of alcohol in her system. So the alcohol by itself wouldn't have been enough to qualify as intoxicated, but combined with her prescription medications, it could be true. 
All right, so let's talk about the owl theory. And yes, you heard me right, owl. So a neighbor came up with the owl did it theory. And this theory says that Kathleen was attacked by an owl outside the house before she went in. And they claim that during the owl onslaught, she fell and then slipped and fell a number of times leading to the injuries that led to her demise. So could an owl attack have led to the death of Kathleen? It sounds crazy. And this whole case is crazy. And maybe this is why the defense never brought this particular theory up in court. It was a neighbor, his name was Larry Pollard, and he didn't come up with the theory, or at least he didn't go public with it until Michael was convicted and in jail. But here's the quickie version of the owl theory. Kathleen was heading back inside the house, an owl swooped down, hit her head, it dug its talons deep into her scalp, causing the lacerations. She rushed inside to escape from the owl. She had been drinking and had taken her prescription meds, and she tried to run upstairs, slipped, fell, fainted, and passed away. Michael came in hours later and found her on the floor. And before you laugh me off YouTube, they did find microscopic owl feathers along with some of her hair in her own hand. And also the wounds on her head did look like they could have been made by claws. Last, owl attacks like this do happen. And I'm not saying to you, good jury, that this is what happened. I'm just giving you the evidence and the theories so you guys can decide for yourself. What are you thinking? So the trial against Michael Peterson lasted for three months and included testimony from a gentleman of the night, shall we say, who never met Michael but was in email contact. Should the judge have allowed this in because it seems like it was just put in to dirty Michael up? Because he never even met the guy. The prosecution spent most of the trial claiming that Michael hit Kathleen with this blowpoke that had mysteriously disappeared, according to the prosecution, except that it turns out that the blowpoke was in Michael's garage the entire time. And when the defense tested it months later, it had cobwebs and debris on it, but not a drop of blood. So despite the blowhole tobacco, a jury convicted Michael and he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And Michael would have stayed there, except the prosecution's blood splatter evidence, their witness, Dwayne Deaver, shady, shady, shady. Deaver was the blood spatter analyst for the State Bureau of Investigations, and he testified against Michael in this case, claiming that blood splatters on the wall showed Kathleen had suffered blunt force trauma, and this is what led to the conviction. In fact, his explanation was so detailed that the expert brought in by the defense could not overcome the evidence that he gave because he made it all up in allegedly in 2011 Deaver got fired for his handling of dozens of cases involving blood evidence and it turns out he was just making stuff up an outside review flagged around 200 cases so after eight years in prison Michael was granted a new trial after the judge ruled that a witness, AKA Deaver, gave misleading testimony. And Michael was offered what's called an Alford plea. And an Alford plea in a criminal court, it's a plea where the defendant doesn't have to admit to what he did, he doesn't have to admit to the act, and he can assert his innocence, but he does admit that sufficient evidence exists that a prosecution could likely convince a judge or jury to find the defendant guilty. Now, Michael says he did the Alford plea because he just wanted to get out of jail. And if he was innocent, I can't blame him. If he was guilty, then he got away with eight years in prison. But I'll leave it to you, our jury, to decide. So after serious consideration, Michael takes the Alford plea on February 24th of 2017, and it reduced his sentence to manslaughter, which got Michael out of jail immediately. 
because the judge sentenced Michael to time served and he set him free. And all of his children stuck by Michael throughout this entire ordeal, both boys and both of the adopted girls, the girls of the woman who fell down the staircase in Germany. The only child who didn't buy in to Michael was Caitlin Atwater and Caitlin was Kathleen's daughter from her first marriage. She believed and still believes that Michael did it and she won a $25 million wrongful death suit against Michael Peterson in 2008. So Michael was a longtime fiction writer and he decided to try his hand at nonfiction in 2019 because he's an older guy now so it's not like he can go out and get a job. So he wrote his own memoir recalling everything that had happened since he was released from prison. And his memoir is available on Amazon. It has a good rating, 4.5 stars on Amazon. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell and please render a verdict in the comment section below of either guilty or not guilty.